Ukrainian President Zelensky is popular, not just among Ukrainians, but Russian-speaking Ukrainians as well. We're looking at a, a, a president who won with something like 75%, I think it was 75% of the vote in 2019, 2019. He is incredibly popular in Ukraine. Uh, before becoming president, Zelensky defended the rights of Russian-speaking Ukrainians since he is one. And as a performer, he paid a price for this. Many of his television programs were banned in Ukraine because he insisted on speaking Russian. Zelensky, Ukrainian President Zelensky, seems to have done a pretty good job building bridges between Russian-speaking Ukrainians and non-Russian-speaking Ukrainians. And judging by the polling, he seems to have convinced a good number of Ukrainians that a nation is not defined by a language, something a white nationalist like Vladimir Putin or Donald Trump or anyone with authoritarian impulses fails to understand. If you're Steve Bannon, if you're Tucker Carlson, if you're Donald Trump, if you're the Republican Party, you believe one language, one people. That's straight out of the authoritarian playbook. You believe in a nationalism built around language and, of course, pigment. So President Zelensky of Ukraine is quickly turning into the face of resistance, refusing to leave Ukraine. On the night of the invasion, Zelensky said he and his family are Putin's number one target. But when President Biden offered Zelensky asylum, Zelensky responded, I don't need a ride, I need ammunition. I don't need a ride, I need ammunition. Zelensky today once again asked the European Union to admit Ukraine. He has made it clear that he's staying in Ukraine, he wants Ukraine to join the European Union and NATO. Zelensky, Jewish, as is Ukraine's prime minister, is uh, known around the world as an actor. Zelensky is known as an actor, not the prime minister. President Zelensky is known as an actor who was able to bring leaders of the European Union to tears last week when he phoned into an emergency meeting telling them he is going to stay and fight even if he dies, and that as the leader of his nation, he wanted to remind all the other world leaders that each one of them could meet the same fate. Reportedly, the European leaders uh, began to cry. Zelensky is also a comedian. He leads with that. We, we always like to say Zelensky is a comedian, and that's pretty much what anybody knows about him. What Zelensky conveniently leaves out is he's also a lawyer. He's a lawyer, as well as a very successful television producer. Those are two strikes against him. He's a lawyer and a television producer who ended up running one of Ukraine's top television stations. Those are three strikes against him. And I'm being serious. He's a lawyer, a television producer, and a network executive. And he ended up owning one of the networks. Uh, those are three strikes against him. The Guardian reported last October that Zelensky's name, President Zelensky, the face of resistance in Ukraine, his name has shown up in the Panama Papers. a secret trove of offshore bank accounts belonging to oligarchs, celebrities, and world leaders. The Guardian reports that the Panama Papers reveal President Zelensky, the current president of Ukraine, the face of resistance, the one who turned down the ride out of Ukraine, and who's staying to fight. The Guardian is reporting that inside the Panama Papers, they have learned that Zelensky has several offshore accounts that were set up right before he was elected president. He set them up allegedly to hide money just in case 
he had to take Biden's he had to take Biden up on his offer and get out of town. Uh, I'm not making apologies for Zelensky putting money into an offshore account, but when you see what he's facing right now, you kind of understand why he might want to hide some money overseas for his own personal protection. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying I kind of understand why he might put some money uh, into the same uh, offshore island accounts as uh, Tony Blair. Uh, his accounts, according to the Pandora Papers, are linked to his best friend, who was also his business partner in multiple television projects. So I'm going to mention a couple of names here. It's a little confusing, so I'll repeat them just so you can keep track of this. Zelensky is the prime minister, the current prime minister of Ukraine. In the presidential campaign in 2019, Zelensky was accused of getting financial support from a Ukrainian oligarch named Igor Kolomisky, whose fortune comes from broadcasting. So he, he is a, uh, an oligarch, a thug, who owned some stations, and Zelensky had some kind of alliance with Igor Kolomosky. He has since, in defense of Zelensky, he has since, it appears, turned on this Russian oligarch who allegedly supported his presidential campaign. Zelensky has identified Igor Kolomosky as an oligarch who should not be allowed to participate in politics. I will get to that in a second because Zelensky, to his credit last year, passed legislation that tried to uh, tackle the, the problem of oligarchs. There are about 13 oligarchs who control Ukraine and Zelensky passed legislation and has, some would say, successfully, or is, is trying to rid his nation of oligarchs, like Petro Poroshenko, okay? Zelensky, current president of Ukraine. He won in 2019, defeating the incumbent, the Ukrainian president, Petro Poroshenko, who's an oligarch, Poroshenko. Zelensky won by a landslide in 2019, right? Zelensky beats Poroshenko by a landslide in 2019. Poroshenko made his fortune, fortune selling sugary treats, chocolate, and uh, he's been accused of profiting uh, off his chocolate factories in Russia and selling coal, uh, reserves that he had and funneling the profits from those sales to Russian speaking separatists fighting on the east to secede from Ukraine. This was before Poroshenko was elected president. Okay. Poroshenko, oligarch, ran for re-election in 2019, lost by a landslide to the current president, Zelensky. Uh, let me just go back to the Pandora Papers for a second. During his re-election campaign, it was his re-election campaign, Poroshenko, the president of Ukraine, running for re-election, accused Zelensky, the comedian president, accused Zelensky of pocketing about $45 million from his business dealings in television and hiding the proceeds offshore. The Guardian says the Pandora Papers suggests that the current President Zelensky, along with business partners, probably moved some of that money into offshore accounts and that Zelensky could even possibly be a partner in very expensive London real estate. So according to the Guardian, Poroshenko, when he was running for re-election, those allegations against Zelensky hiding money in offshore accounts could be true. I'm building to a larger point here. I, I wanna show you how united the Ukrainian people are. This is why I'm pointing out that there are differences politically uh, between Zelensky and Poroshenko 
And like I said, Zelensky defeated Poroshenko by a landslide in 2019. But despite his disagreements with Zelensky, Poroshenko, the predecessor, the former president, last week donned a bulletproof vest and declared he stands with the nation of Ukraine. You know, we're looking for two sides to this story. We're trying to say, well, Putin, you know, invaded Ukraine because a lot of the Ukrainians wanted him. We're not seeing too much evidence of that. Poroshenko, who's in a lot of trouble with Zelensky, I'll get to that in a second. He, he's been accused of treason and he's standing trial and Zelensky is behind that. Poroshenko, the former president of Ukraine, last week donned a bulletproof vest and declared he stands with the nation of Ukraine. He said, quote, we wanna be free, we wanna be democratic, and we wanna return back our country to the European family. Putin hates Ukraine, he hates Ukrainians. That sounds like something I would say. Putin, Putin hates Ukraine, he hates Ukrainians. So this is a, a, uh, a former president, Poroshenko, accused of treason, who has been accused of funding Russian separatists being in the pocket of Putin. He has returned to Ukraine and is fighting alongside Zelensky. So we are told. So we are told. Poroshenko, previous president, returned to Ukraine last month to face charges of treason. And he still, so we are told, insists he's fighting the Russians, he's fighting with Zelensky to, to, to keep Ukraine free. He returned late January last month to face charges of treason. Poroshenko is one of Ukraine's wealthiest businessmen, and he has been charged by the Zelensky government with selling coal to subsidize Russian separatists back in 2014. Uh, now, Poroshenko became president of Ukraine in 2014 after President Viktor Yanukovych was forced out of office when pro-Western protesters took to the streets demanding Ukraine have a stronger integration with the West, including the European Union. This was 2014. So this was what was orchestrated, the Maidan Square protests. This was orchestrated by Hillary and the Obama administration. And the, the, the president, Yank, Yankovich, not Weird Al, Yanukovych, uh, Weird Al Yanukovych, uh, Viktor Yanukovych in 2014 fled to Russia, where he now lives in exile. He reportedly has a net worth of $12 billion and put about $50 billion in offshore accounts for his cronies. He filled his cabinet with Russian-speaking Putin loyalists from those separatist republics in the Donbass region. The Donbass region is uh, up against Russia on the east, and two republics have broken away. And last week, uh, uh, Putin identified them as uh, separate republics. Uh, Yan Yan Yanukovych, the former president of Russia, Putin's puppet, was convicted by the Ukrainian high court in absentia of treason. All right. Uh, so to review, Yanukovych was a Russian puppet. He was overthrown in 2014 by Hillary in America. And uh, Poroshenko became president. And then Zelensky beat him by a landslide in 2019. Yanukovych is very important in the story of the 2016 election, as well as what's going on right now. 
Yanukovych. In 2005, Paul Manafort, Donald Trump's campaign manager, earned $30 million helping Viktor Yanukovych get elected president of Ukraine. Yanukovych was backed by Putin. His Party of Regions, that was the name of his political party, his Party of Regions is reportedly a haven for mobsters and oligarchs. FAIR has done some great reporting on America's involvement in the overthrow of Viktor Yanukovych back in 2014. Yanukovych, Putin puppet, Yanukovych, Ukrainian president, Putin puppet worth about $15 billion. Paul Manafort in bed with Yanukovych starting in 2005. FAIR, which has been doing some great reporting, says that the Obama administration was instrumental in toppling Yanukovych and financing his opposition, including a far-right political party known as the Right Sector. And from the Right Sector grew the Azov Battalion, a paramilitary militia that identifies as neo-Nazi extremists, even using the SS insignia on much of its equipment. Members of the Azov Battalion met with U.S. regime change advocates like Republican John McCain, this was bipartisan, as well as several members of Obama's State Department. They were recognized as neo-Nazis. When Trump was president in 2018, Congress voted to approve arms sales to Ukraine, but specifically stipulated that none of that money could go to the Azov Battalion, the neo-Nazi Azov Battalion. Nobody knows if any American money ever made it to the Azov Battalion because it was officially absorbed into the Ukrainian military. It's now part of Zelensky's military. In June of 2018, Amnesty International joined in a letter warning the Ukrainian government that the Azov Battalion was a radical group that promoted hatred, discrimination, and violence. Amnesty International said the Azov Battalion had attacked journalists, women's groups, and LGBTQ protesters while enjoying immunity from prosecution. This was back in 2018 when Poroshenko was the president, not Zelensky. So there is the Azov Battalion, and they are a dangerous neo-Nazi group that is part of the Ukrainian military. That being said, here in America, a Military Times poll in 2017 found that nearly 25% of actively serving military personnel here in the United States have encountered white nationalism and racism from American soldiers who they serve with. Dozens of vets or those still serving in America's military took part in the January 6 attack on Congress. It's a problem everywhere, but I don't think it's as pronounced <laughs> as the Azov Battalion. I think they kind of I think they kind of keep it see a little more under the radar here in the United States. Or maybe they don't. Maybe I spent too much time in New York City and I should visit Michigan. Anyway, so Zelensky was elected president in 2019, promising to take on the oligarchs. This is pretty, pretty interesting. In May, of two, uh, in May of last year, Zelensky, President Zelensky, the current president of Ukraine, introduced legislation to create a national registry of oligarchs. I'm going to slow down here. I just want you to hear about this. This is really beautiful. Under Zelensky's new legislation, anyone meeting four out of the five criteria to qualify as an oligarch 
will be put on a national registry of oligarchs. I mean, come on, there's a national registry of oligarchs now in Ukraine. I mean, that's like, you know, they're being, they're not being treated like sex offenders, but if you're an oligarch, you have to register with the government. How beautiful is that? And if you're, if you are designated as an oligarch, you know, we, if you're on the no fly list, you are stripped of some of your assets. You're put on a list. There are reportedly 13. Oh, I'll tell you what the criteria is in a second. This is, you know, in theory, this is beautiful. Uh, there are roughly 13 oligarchs who control Ukraine. And they say there is no other country in Europe with that kind of concentration of wealth, that, uh, that, that all the money is concentrated basically in 13 families. And Europe doesn't have anything like that. And uh, either does America. All our wealth is concentrated in five families. Uh, 13 families, that would be uh, communism. If we had 13 families controlling all the wealth. Ukrainian oligarchs emerged in the 90s after Ukraine declared independence from the Soviet Union and state-owned businesses were turned over to what they call the free market. Uh, the oligarchs first worked for the government. And then when the government decided to sell off all the state assets, these oligarchs who were government officials, they were able to buy those assets, assets like oil, television stations, mines. They were able to buy them on the cheap because they were government officials who were basically selling the property to themselves. And so, yeah, and they become major shareholders, even though they don't have to put up any of the money. It's like, uh, you know, uh, what's his name? Zuckerberg getting to be the uh, majority shareholder of Facebook. All he has to do is put in the sweat equity. Zuckerberg doesn't have to put in any money, but, you know, and that's how the oligarchs, they were government officials who put in sweat equity by stealing the government assets. So Zelensky in September of last year passed this anti-oligarch law. It defined, you know, we should look into this. This is, this is pretty amazing. Zelensky's anti-oligarch law defines an oligarch using uh, three of four criteria. If you, if you meet three of these four criteria, you just might be an oligarch. You may be an oligarch if one, you are participating in politics. Two, you own the mass media or some components of the mass media. Three, uh, you own or control a monopoly. And four, whether your assets exceed $85 million. So if you meet three out of those four criteria, you are an oligarch. Interesting. If you participate in politics, you own some leg of the country's mass media, you control a monopoly, and you have assets that exceed $85 million, you're, you're an oligarch. If you are labeled as such, you must publicly disclose all your assets. You are then banned from holding any elective office, any posts in the government. How great is this? You're not allowed to hold elective office or take any, you know, you can't be an ambassador. You can't run an agency. You're banned from financing a political party and you're banned from participating in the privatization of any government goods or services. Hey, you know, Zelensky, uh, we, we we should see if see if he wants to run America. Uh, and to his credit, Zelensky put his backer Igor Kolomoski on the uh, the registry. The the person who Zelensky got rich off, who backed him, uh, he he got listed as an oligarch. Uh, in accordance with this new oligarch law, 
Zelensky's predecessor, Poroshenko, the president before him, has agreed to sell off all of his broadcasting companies. It's interesting. Before the invasion, President Zelensky's approval rating started to decline, but he was still more popular than Poroshenko, still the most popular politician in Ukraine. Zelensky should expect a significant bump in the polls because the Ukrainian people have rallied behind him. 